morning, tubes. I mean, evening. It's evening. It's Friday evening. I still have one more day to work, but that's not going to stop me from checking out all these new parts I got. Uh, so let's take a look at what we got here. First of all, we got these awesome locking hubs. Thanks to a Corey, Corey Habercamp, which I mentioned in another video. Um, Corey, your, your locking full-time hubs are right there. I'm going to send that off Monday when I get a chance. Um, actually, I will, I will have a chance. I'll get it Monday morning. So, um, a few days ago, I tried to repair the hub from the passenger side. Um, it's, it was trash. So, uh, what I went ahead and did is I bought two brand new hubs. Now, um, they don't come with the bearings, but they do come with races already inside. I'm going to clean that up real good. Make sure there's no, uh, to bring in a little bit of a paper towel bit in there. I think what I'm going to do, fire up the air compressor and maybe, just maybe, fire in these studs here. I think it's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Morning, tubers. Uh-oh, happy Valentine's Day. I'm spending my happy Valentine's Day working on this. Um, so, uh, yeah, I went over drunk drunkily over the parts that we got. We got quite a bit of parts. I got more on the table here, a lot more, um, which includes brand spanking new bearings. <clears throat> I got new ball joints in which this video we're going to do ball joints. Um, and then probably in tomorrow's video we're going to... Um, I gotta take these to a shop, uh, or like, or we'll probably go to Bastards Auto Parts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them finish pressing these studs in, so we can get these fully secured into the new hubs that I purchased for these. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and pack that with grease and get the new bearings and the new wheel seals in, and hopefully we can get that onto the spindles. But today we're gonna get the spindles mounted, and. Uh, and lock down. We're gonna get the new ball joints in, all that good stuff. Um, I will have to get remember to get some grease, but <clears throat> we'll take care of all that later. The ball joints are pre-greased, uh, but we'll want to grease them up a little bit later. Make sure that they're they're full of grease. So in a previous video, kind of unrelated to this whole series, I went in there, re-greased that, um, I re-greased that bearing there. Wouldn't be a bad idea to replace it, but I think it's all right. So I just went and re-greased it with uh, some special stuff. We got our lower ball joint here. Uh, I'll see the part number on this guy is K8195T. It's a Moog ball joint. I decided to go with a quality ball joint here. We're gonna pop the boot off. I'm using a horrible freight um, guy here. <laughs> I was really beating on that. That. So I want to go in something like that. Now, we grab a pair of snap ring pliers and we can pop in our new ring there. Um, so it says to mount the grease thing inboard. So I'm just going to go something like that. First of all, hang on. Make sure we don't get any dirt in there.
Okay, it's all clicked into place. Yep, I like that. So I don't have the right size things for these, so we'll just be very careful. Just like that. Boom. Threads are usually tight on these. It's going in straight. Snaps off. You're like, well, what the hell? Now on the upper ball joints, um, these use a little collar thing. Uh, there is a tool for this. So this one, he's just gonna stick in like that. We're gonna put this in, put the thing in, and just run it right the hell down. Now this has the grease fitting on the end. Which is not threaded spline, so they'll they'll bite in. They're gonna bite into this when they get pressed in. Now, oddly enough, this upper ball joint doesn't use any particular. Um, that sounded weird. It doesn't use a freaking um, sequin. Okay, run into just a slight snag. It's not gonna be too big of an issue. But what ha what it is is my thing is missing some pieces, and um, I don't have anything. Th uh, that's enough to let this stick down into, and then something short enough to press down. So we got our BFG. And we're in. It helps when you lube things up. So I'll put a little bit of lube on this. I'm just using like mo electric motor oil. separately. So we'll take our new spindle here. Our new, our new, new knuckle. Just something like that. And then um, it would be nice if I had the nut. These are uh, locking nuts here. Do I have a size for that? I wonder if that's a different size now. Nope. We're gonna go. So while video Jimmy is aimlessly looking for a tool to tighten the socket, editing Jimmy is gonna comment and say, I'll be coming back to this point uh, not only with the preload tool for that ball, upper ball joint collar, but I'm also going to get a socket that will fit that lower ball joint nut so that I can properly torque it down. Because if we don't torque it down, this is going to happen. Alright, so, I got this thing. I got the bottom ball joint locked down. I actually, when I started running this down, um, it pulled this up a little bit and uh, it was enough to jam that ball joint so I started tightening it up and got that snug so the bottom's done 
Um, I'm gonna go hunt down that preload tool and uh, I'm gonna get this properly preloaded because I'm not quite getting it with the screwdriver. Because when I go to tighten this, it pulls it up and then it starts to jam the ball joint up and I don't want that. So I'm gonna get the preload tool and then I should be able to jam that up some more or preload it. Because when it's not preloaded enough, it starts to pull this up just a tiny bit and then it wants to pull the ball joint out of its slot again. So we don't we don't want that. Um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna go get a preload tool um, here in a little bit. We'll come back to that. Um, we will put the castellated nut on just like so. And then our cotter pin. And put that in kind of like kind of loosely like that and we'll come back with the preload tool preload those up and then uh, should be to go it is nice seeing this little baby little girl oh girl go back together <coughs> right into a box that could not have been any more perfect. I went right into that box. Um, here we're just going to take a light coating and just, Ooh, it's so slippery. Coat this. Coat this thing up a little bit. We'll grab our new spindle. I'm gonna take some grease here and just kind of work that in there. Get another pair of gloves here in a moment. Oh, it goes on. Just like if you were putting a wheel on. Alrighty then. <laughs> so, yeah, just need to preload that side. Hell yeah. Yep, we got enough spacing there for the uh, the guy here. Okay, got the dirt out of that. Now, uh, I forgot to mention, they give you a, a plug, which is optional. So you could technically just grease this up. And so, you know, if you're wheeling, you're gonna might have an issue of maybe b bumping this up against something and breaking it off. So you could grease it up and throw one of these plugs in and not have that issue. 
Yeah, just just getting it to bite in there is the is the trick. Probably could have used like a wrench and then held it, but. I made a huge mistake. I didn't check where the Zerk fitting was. Oh my god. <laughs> it's all the way back here. <laughs> check it. Zerk fitting facing out this way. getting new parts and cleaning stuff up and rebuilding something and making it fresh and new and function better than than it than it did or or from the factory. Just one more click. Yeah that Zerk fitting will also keep that from coming out. Well <laughs> well it cheers it off. Okay this stuff. Alright now I'm gonna move stuff around. Facing up. Now, so make sure that your seals get greased up, which I already done. Later. So now. We don't want to forget this because we want to have brakes, right? This only goes on one way. nice. That looks sweet. I don't have a bearing or anything on this yet, so. It'll look something like that. <laughs> yeah! So, quick thing. These brakes, these rotors, and hub assemblies you can actually get all together with new studs the reason why I went this route where I gotta do it all myself is because sometimes I'm an idiot all right well I'm gonna go to the parts store and see if they can't press these studs in the rest of the way um, hold up Jimmy all right I'm gonna tell you guys right now if you're gonna do this uh, whole rebuild type of thing when you do the brakes and let's say a hub is blown out or whatever, just, or if you need new brakes period, just get the whole rotor and hub assembly as one thing. They've got new wheel studs, everything is all together. You, all you got to do is just take it out of the box, clean it, and put it on the thing. And if I would have done that, I would have been done. And for <laughs> sakes, this is why I should have bought the whole everything all in one some bitch I was beating on this mother so hard that I did this to it oh shit I done fucked up <laughs> well shit yeah crap so these lug nuts are too tight going in here. I've got these, they're already pre-splined and everything. Uh, not pre-splined, but splined from earlier. It, it's just too tight. I mean, I, I'm. I, it took me like maybe five wax and I got one in, but on this new hub, it's like, honk, it's just way too tight. And then, you know, if it wasn't like that, we probably would've had a better time, but so, I need to get new wheel studs. I'll take one with me. 
This one's good. Um, but they need to be able to fit in here. Um, and then on top of that, I'm going to just go to Napa and have them uh, press this in because I, I don't want to damage this and I don't want to damage the new rotor. So I may go to O'Reilly's and, and, and ask them if they can press that stuff in if they have the tools. If not, I'll go to Napa and try that. So, okay, well, lesson learned. You know, um, we won't learn unless we make mistakes. And this is just one of those things where we know that we'll need a press for next time. So, as much as I would love to <laughs> grease this up and throw it on, I, I can't. So, oh well. We will come back to this uh, later in the week. Um, for right now, <clears throat> this is what we're looking like. We're mostly put back together. Um, I think I'm going to have to take this back apart and uh, pull the shaft out. I might even have to take the whole thing back out and knock this thing down a tiny bit because uh, I did it did pull out a tiny bit when I uh, was being I didn't know I just didn't know. Anyways, I'll fix it later. But uh, nice and firm. <sighs> All right. Well, I'll be a little bit more patient next time. So Wednesday. Or unless I get my taxes, the rest of my taxes tomorrow, then I'll just do it tomorrow. We'll find out. Well, I left Kentucky back in 49 and went to Detroit working on assembly line. The first year they had me putting wheels on Fords. Every day I'd watch them beauties roll by and sometimes I'd hang my head and cry cause I always wanted me one that was long and black. One day I devised myself a plan that should be the envy of most any man. I'd sneak it out of there in a lunchbox in my hand. Now getting caught meant getting fired but I figured I'd have it all by the time I retired. I'd have me a pickup truck worth at least a hundred grand. I'd get it one piece at a time and it wouldn't cost me a dime you know it's me when I come through your town I'm gonna ride around in style I'm gonna drive everybody wild cause I'll have the only one there is around so the very next day when I punched in with my big lunch box and with help from my friend I left that day with a lunch box full of gear I've never considered myself a thief, but Ford Motor Company wouldn't miss just one little piece, especially if I strung it out over several years. I kind of don't like the song after listening to it. Uh, 